First designed during World War II, deployable bridges were invented to cross areas with inadequate infrastructure. Deployable bridges today are used in a variety of military and relief operations. They are lightweight bridges that are easily set up and taken down. The bridges are mostly used after natural disasters where transportation of supplies is urgently needed, but after such disasters, roads and bridges are closed or flooded, making it very hard to transport vehicles across. Different structural designs should be used to cross different spans because of their different stress dispersions. For the most part, the same beam bridge design is used to cross an 8.5 meter foot gap as a 45 meter foot gap used for tanks, even though there are five main bridge designs. The five main bridge designs are truss, arch, beam, suspension, and cable steam. All have very different designs. Usually t taking the form of a trapezoid, the truss bridge is commonly known for its triangles. It has a top and bottom span, which are connected by perpendicular king posts. The king posts are then connected by diagonals, which give it its distinct look and make it sturdier to withstand heavy loads. Another design is the arch bridge, and like the truss bridge's truss members, the arch bridge's shape makes it very distinctive. Beam bridges are planks that go across a ditch. Without the reinforcement from other pieces of the bridge, the beam bridge is very weak. It is actually the weakest type of bridge, for it bends and eventually snaps very easily when weight is added. Suspension and cable stay bridges are not as useful in deployable bridge situations because they require giant towers to hold lots of the bridge's weight. The suspension bridge consists of two towers with the main cable and hangers, while the cable stay has one tower with the cables connecting directly to the tower. Both are used to cross long spans. During World War II, Donald Bailey created one of the most famous deployable bridges, known as the Bailey Bridge. Designed in 1941, the full-size prototype was built just six months after the design was finished, and then it was tested. The final design was to make a truss frame because the ends were easily connectable. This allowed for one six-foot section to be repeated over and over, which made it easier to manufacture. Each piece could not weigh more than 600 pounds if a crew of six men were to assemble it. It had to be light enough for the people to carry the pieces without needing machinery. To connect these sections, a peg had to be hammered through two holes on either piece. The full bridge was built on land and rolled over to the other side of the ditch. Afterwards, in order to test the, its load capacity, more and more tanks filled with lead were driven on the top and sometimes stacked on one another. This was done until the prototype was crushed. There are five main points that the engineers designing the bridge have to remember in order to make a good deployable bridge. First, since the bridge has to be deployed without advanced knowledge of the span of the ditch or stream, it has to be able to be multiple lengths. Second, the construction material has to be readily available. Third, the bridge design has to have a basic repeatable design so that one piece has to be manufactured over and over again. Fourth, it has to be deployable, which means that it has to be light enough for a few people to carry it. And fifth is that the, the bridge has to be easily put up and taken down, so the design needs to be simple. Another design, as suggested by Juan, is a scissor type of deployment. Though also a truss bridge like the Bailey Bridge, the way of deployment is very different. The Bailey Bridge is deployed by carrying out sides of the truss, then connecting them with a peg. The design of Juan's bridge is very simple and is seen in other devices that use a pivot point. This concept was a scissor extension. The centers of the X's in the truss frame are on pivot points and shift to lay on top of one another when pressure is added from the ends. This causes each X to fold on into one line and the entire bridge is easily movable, while the Bailey Bridge, each section must be transported. Whereas the Bailey Bridge was designed to carry tanks, Quan's bridge was strictly pedestrian and therefore does not have to carry as much weight and be as stiff as the Bailey Bridge would have to be. This bridge met all the criteri criteria stated previously because of its ability to scissor out and expand to any length. The scissor mechanism could be repeated multiple times, making it easy to manufacture because it is two truss members with a pivot point. It was made of hollow steel, which isn't that lightweight, but is available and is lighter than regular steel. The scissoring out is what makes it so easily deployable and was the entire point of designing the bridge that way. The truss bridge is not the only design for temporary bridges. 
Koshmaka used a classic beam bridge design laying down two 750 pound planks made of a foam core with a carbon epoxy skin next to one another. Though each plank is heavier than each part of the Bailey Bridge, fewer pieces had to be transported. Only two planks had to be moved into Koshmaka's experiment, whereas to make a bridge of equivalent length using Bailey Bridge pieces, one would have to move four pieces plus the decking. The two treadways were, were tested using eight, 18 strain gauges, nine on each with three on the center line at the each quarter span mark and another two in line with those gauges a quarter meter away perpendicular to the center line. Three trucks were run over the plank as measurements were taken, two wheeled vehicles and one with the track. Interestingly, the result of the true treadways were not symmetrical. This means that either the vehicles were unevenly weighted or that one side was better built than the other. Another type of bridge similar to the beam bridge is a pontoon boat bridge. This beam bridge has a support of multiple boats underneath it. This prevents the bridge from collapsing into the water. It does not do a very good job as you can see in the graph's vertical deflection as two trains pass by one another. Yet another design of a deployable bridge is the rolled up arch bridge as proposed by Letterman. Letterman's design begins with an arch bridge like the one seen in ancient Rome, complete with a keystone at the top center of the arch. There is a flexible strong ribbon that runs along the top of the arch and all the stones are fused to the ribbon. The stones are not cemented to each other in any way. The bridge is able to be rolled up inside out and stored to be transported, which makes it easily deployable. The ribbon is wound inwards and the stone pieces coil around it. When the bridge is unfurled, it relaxes into its natural arch shape because of the compression forces between adjacent stones. The pieces still contain a keystone that allows the bridge to have all the support that a regular arch bridge has. Though Leatherman's bridge is only one set length, it can cover any distance up to that length. The most important feature that Letterman's bridge has is that it is easily deployable. Accurately measuring and comparing stress on each type of bridge is difficult because of the stress spaced out differently on each bridge. For example, in a truss bridge, the X's are being compressed while the top and bottom spans are being pulled apart. The tension and compression is most easily seen in a beam bridge because of the vertical deflection that takes place while weight is added. When the bridge bends downward, the top is under compression and the, t and the bottom is under tension. But in an arch bridge, the whole bridge is being compressed. That is how it stays together. All the pieces of the arch are pushing against each other. The keystone is the principal piece that keeps the entire bridge up. The arch bridge distributes the weight more evenly compared to a truss or beam bridge whose stress is mostly near the section where the weight is. I propose to design different types of deployable bridges such as truss, beam, or arch. After setting it up and taking it down multiple times to get used to the deployment and retraction method, it would be time to see how long it would take to put together and take apart each type of bridge. Pouring sand into a container on the bridge will continuously add weight, and by having strain gauges on the bridge, one would be able to see the stress induced by the sand. In the end, the best cost to time to yield limit to distance to dead load could be determined. One would want the least expensive bridge with the shortest deployment time and the highest yield limit and longest distance. The hypothesis is that the arch bridge will have the best ratio because it deploys quickly and has a high yield limit and is made out of wood, which is very inexpensive. Thank you for watching my presentation.